very hard to reach the same conclusion. So I want to start with a subject that everyone should know about. Men. Women love men sometimes. Men love men sometimes. And everybody knows about man in general. But I start usually at the beginning. And in so doing, I looked up a little bit about man again and it simply said that man is an adult male human being. It also said then that a boy is a male child before he becomes a man. And then it was interesting, I found that at one time the word girl really meant boy. And that was amongst what they call Anglo-Saxon people as they were beginning to define the gender. The word girl actually meant boy at one time. I then looked up the word patriarch and it said it means the father or the male head of a family or a tribe. And of course, it gave examples in the Christian Bible. I simply use that because this is where a lot of my people seem to point their references again. It stated that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were examples of patriarch. I appreciate that. We presently live in and for some time have lived under what we call a patriarchal or male ruled society. Most of the presidents of the country in which we serve have been male, and most of these things have been run by males. Maybe that's why it's in the condition it is. The Bible says, and again I'm going back to the book that most of us feel we understand probably better than other books, whether we do or not, we'll have to actually see. And it says that Adam was the first man, and that the Lord God created what he placed under him, which was called Adam. He said that Adam was put in a seemingly tropical paradise, and because he might become lonely, he made for him other animals, and then finally a helpmeet, who was known as woman. Now, because of this emphasis on man by the Lord God, many religious and also uh, nations, again, throughout the planet, venerate man. They also say that the church had specific interest in the divine right of man, because he was said to be the ruler of all things and said to dominate all things that were made for him put under his jurisdiction. But something's happened in our society. In our world today, there is much debate whether that something is good or that something is bad. Suddenly, there is what we call a male man, and instead we now have a male person or a letter carrier. Instead of the chairman, we have a chairperson. Instead of a congressman, we have a what? A representative or a congressperson. Mankind is now human being, policeman is an officer of the law, and so on and so forth it goes. This is so that one gender does not then feel disrespected by the other gender. The male and female supposedly now are equal and therefore have the equal rights which supposedly they had anyway. We have homosexuality and lesbians hitting man below his sexual belt and in fact threatening his very masculinity. We have drugs that are turning man into a weakling. We also have stress that's turning him into a nervous wreck. And poor food intakes again is turning him into a very unfertile, very impotent, very frustrated shell of his former self. We're finding that man now dies much earlier than woman. That man again seems to get diseases faster than woman, that he's more subject to heart attacks, more subject to ulcers and to diabetes, to hair loss, and again to many of the ravages of old age which it shows on a man faster than it does now on a woman. So the question must finally be raised, can man in his present state actually survive? Now, outside of that, when we look at the black man, in 
addition to all of those stresses, now must come the stress of a society which in the main is white male dominated and oppresses the black male at every turn. We could go into a long lecture here about male-female relationships and about white man, yellow man, brown man, and black man relationships, but I want to move past all of that. This may come up down the line as we hopefully meet together through the year, per se, but I want to go back and take a look at the book and the passage from that book that made man supposedly the dominant creature on earth and what it was said, but I want to look at it from a metaphysical point of view. I want to kind of tear it apart a little bit, maybe being a little bit sacrilegious if necessary, but still trying to keep the text involved to see if we can maybe look at this thing and reach a different conclusion. In Genesis, the first chapter, 26 verse, God is made to say, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over, and it goes on to say the various creatures that fly and crawl and so on again like this. In Genesis, the 26th verse, it says again, So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him, male and female. Now, what do we have here? We have a God creating a male and a female at the same time and calling them mutually man. Later, a Lord God created another man and called him Adam. And this is where the trouble really begins to start and what the modern theologists and preferably the theosophists are calling the second creation or the second Adam or what I like to colloquially call Adam II. The Hebrew word for Adam means red clay when literally translated. It shows that Adamic man was formed physically from earth-bound ingredients and was somewhat red in appearance. The Hebrew word Yahweh was interpreted by these scholars as Lord God. This was taken from what is called the Tetragrammaton YVHV or Yadhevah. The Hebrew word Yehovah was interpreted again as God and Jehovah or Yehovah simply meant past, present, and future. Now this was done by what they call the scholars who were known as the Masorites or the writer scribes again. These were supposedly as we understand now Hebrew scholars and scribes interpreting what is called Oriental philosophy or which was called now the chosen or chosen people which were there and for to come. So this was like a study guide for these so-called chosen by the scribes which were born before them. These Masoretes wrote what was called the Masoretic text of that chapter in that book literally was a universally created self-contained parthenogenic person hopefully of higher consciousness that God created that was called man. Parthenogenic simply means dual sex, able to reproduce self without the aid of sperm and egg. It means a self-contained individual which obviously was either a very higher vibrating person at this time or pretty much we might say parthenogenic things were being placed on earth at that time which we don't find now. How many have ever heard of the Parthenon? The building called the Parthenon. Okay, the Parthenon in Greece is said to have been built by the Greeks. I doubt that very seriously. And it deals with what we would now call again a place where Parthenon and Parthenogenesis was practiced. They would go there at certain times of the year. They would have certain foods and fastings that they went through. They would avoid moonlight for a while or sunlight for a while, depending again on who was there and who was going to be placed at or in the Parthenon. Partially this creation by God and then the second creation by the Lord God had the ability to reproduce itself as a God possibly should. 
this was changed. This was uh, this fallen person now no longer could do this and was polarized, making the divine principle of life separate in two distinct bodies, which under parts of the Genesis, it had been one body containing both sexual attributes. Now these two separations were called male and female, and the new and lesser creature was now called Hugh man now called Hugh man I now quote again going back to the biblical scholars in Genesis first and second chapter and it came to pass this means obviously after some time it passed when man began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took of them wives of all which they chose, and there was born to them mighty men, and there were giants in the earth. Now what do we have here? If there's any logic that can be made out of those phrases in the Bible, obviously a primordial race of people, mainly man, born of God, came in unto men who had produced offsprings that were not like them and since the sons of God had no women with them had left their women folk home and no women were amongst them they then went amongst these people that were called created humans took the women made love to the women and there were born to them something that was part man and something that was part God if you would it was a different type of an offspring since again these earth women were different from the sons of God that came in unto them many of them in bearing these children suffered mightily and also wondered at what kind of creation was now coming out of their womb it was interesting that seemingly the first production here as we'll get more into that tomorrow afternoon were all females and later on some males were born and because they were shall we say scarce they actually had to fight their way into the earth and they had to fight hard to repropagate their kind they even had to result to what was called circumcision not making sense yet it will it is now found that a male has reproductive organs called phallus or penix, prostate, testes, and scrotum. The female has reproductive organs called clitoris and ovaries, uterus and womb, and sometimes has been referred as to as womb man. We find that the female fallopian tubes, will be named after a guy named Fallopius in 1523, resembles very closely the male vast deferens and the male prostate gland resembles very much an atrophied or shrunken female womb or uterus every male has the rudimentary mammary glands of the female and at times can actually produce milk and if necessary as some of the African tribes were shown to can even suckle a child per se we also find that the what is called bobo urethra glands for any of you doing in the pre-med or looking up again for say if you're nurses or doctors again that those glands of the male are equal to the largest so-called vestibular glands in woman herself when we look even further we begin to see some really way out but interesting things which show that at one time there might have been a throwback here that everything was not cut and dry as the sexes are now everybody didn't look alike and something also went on on this planet that they've tried to hide or seemingly have tried to mix people up in thinking that everybody is the same and the big difference between male and female is great it may not be as great as we think we understand that the prostate gland is something that the male has that the female does not have I looked up the word prostate and I find it means literally to stand in front of to stand in front of prostate when I look up the word prostrate 
which many people kind of confuse the two, it means to lie flat with the head down. You prostrate yourself on the ground or gymniflex. It has nothing to do with prostate, which means again to stand in front of or something that stands in front of something. We find that the prostate seems to stand in front of the male urethra duct and gland, which is in front of the bladder. And most men have some kind of prostate trouble sometime in their life, usually after 40, some of them before, especially if they're alcoholics or heavy into drugs. The question is, why? And what does this have to do with the separation, supposedly, of the sexes? And what am I still driving at? Stay with me. It's going to get even more interesting. We find now that in some cases of giganticism and dwarfism, the female clitoris resembles very much the male what? Penis. If you've seen some of these pictures of anomalies, we see the picture supposedly of the freaks of Earth, per se. We find again that the glands are so close together, the organs are so close together, that they almost double in their function. We also know, too, that some men have a large foreskin over their phallic symbols, or penises again, that have to be cut back by medical doctors, or as in Africa, amongst the Ndombis again, amongst the Hausa people, some of these in Fulani, it is actually done as a ritual of life by groups of males before the child reaches puberty, which is a very harsh thing, and near birth if possible. I'm suggesting to you that the reason why this foreskin grows so much and the reason why these old Hebrews went through such trouble to give circumcision was because at one time on earth, since the males had a very hard time making it into life as males, as we'll find out, all original zygotes are females and have to change to males or there would be no males on earth, we find that this is simply, again, the covering like it would be over the clitoris that has produced itself in males itself, and especially some time ago, it had to constantly be cut back or it would cease to grow and try to cover the penis. It would begin to grow to such an extent that it seemed, again, like a deformity. It shows again that nature actually fought against man's entrance on earth and his reproduction was almost nil. All he could do would be to find if he was one of the ones that was successful in coming into life, he tried to maintain his own sexuality through a lot of difficulty. A whole rite had to be performed to continue to circumcise those males that were strong enough to make entrance to the earth plane. We also find that the rib cage of man and female is different. We find again that the rib cage, of course, encases the lungs, and that the lungs usually in a male are larger than those of a female. The lungs do this one thing in the main. They exchange oxygen and give up carbon dioxide and carbon, uh, all of the different poisons in the body and allow the body to breathe by the capacity of the lungs. And the quality of the oxygen being osmosed into the blood, do you have the individual growing either stronger or weaker, more psychic or less psychic? So the lungs have a large part to do with the quality of life and the kind of energy that flows through the male or the female. Since this is a man lecture, we're going to say simply this. The energy that is exchanged from the blood that gives us life, which we call oxygen, at one time was very, very strong. The energy was such that the brain cells actually almost vibrated from the kind of pure oxygen that was on Earth and it was coming into man himself. Then as Earth became more polluted and as the energy fields of Earth began to get less vibrant, the oxygen capacity and the energy in the oxygen also depleted and man lost the power to do a lot of things seemingly that he could do before. The energy simply was not there. The energy was not in the corpuscles of the red blood cells. The energy was not in the oxygen and the oxygen began to be weaker. And therefore man began to be weaker as a consequence. Most men who are from the sons of God, that paraphrase again in the Bible,
have a very interesting gland that science does not talk about, that the physiologists do not talk about. Some men have discovered it, others have not. Some sciences have taught man to use this gland, but very few Western sciences even deal with it anymore. Some of you may already know, some of you may not know, and some of you may learn something a little bit different tonight. If the men in the audience that I see here, without hurting yourself, will simply take the top or the tip of your tongue and try to put it up near the roof of your mouth. Now the females can do it too, but you're not going to find there what the men will find there. You will find, first of all, a very ticklish little area, it's a little mantle with little ridges, it's very sensitive, and then a pithy area near the back of the mouth. Now some of you will notice that that pithy area can do strange things. If you eat too fast and you get a pea or a corn or something like that, it can actually come up through that pithy area and wind up coming up out of your nose or actually stop up your windpipe. How many have ever found things that go the wrong way? Oh, come on, I know some of you, everybody's gone through that one. All right, be honest with me here. It's a small group, come on. Now, that means that there is a connecting passage where it's there. And it can either go down, and hopefully the esophagus closes as it goes down uh, the, uh, the trachea per se again and goes down to the digestive system. But every once in a while it goes the wrong way and we can see that there's another interconnecting passage there. Well, just ahead of that pithy center, you will find a little mound or a ridge. And right up underneath it, there is a little crevice or opening or hole in the roof of your mouth. Now take your time and kind of explore. First you get to the little tickers area, the mantle. But between that area and that, you'll see a little mound and you may feel a little depression. In some cases, it's never been used. It's pretty com almost completely closed and others are still kind of open. Just the men now that say the females, you're blessed or you're cursed. I don't know which. You don't have that. Now with the men, how many have found that little mound or how many already knew it was there in the first place? Let me just see your hands. Just one person, two, three, four. How many ever can find the little depression or maybe even an open hole that's there? Can't see for this big light on me here. Uh, okay, no, no one at all. One person. Two people. Well, have some fun with your own body this evening. When you go home, check that out, that little mound underneath check and see the little opening or depression that's there and understand that all men on earth do not have that some men on earth do have it very few if any women have it at all it is one of the things that mark the separation of the sexes and a lot of double talk has been made about that hill that mount that depression and that tunnel that leads up into the skull directly from the mouth this is why many sons of God who take in a lot of cow products and mucus making products wonder why in the world they suffer so greatly while others eat all kind of cow products and don't that is one of the reasons that your doctors and scientists do not tell you because if enough things get in that passageway it will begin to hurt it will also begin to stop you up and you'll get one of the biggest head colds you've ever seen in your life it is not coming from just mucus that's taken into the system. It's coming from that little drainage that goes down that passageway, especially from the sons of God. That passageway was to be kept open. And a lot of instructions have gone about, a lot of edifices, a lot of buildings and huge monuments have been built to that one miracle that was left as a sign for the sons of God so they would know who they were and also know what they should do to ascend. Many of the Oriental masters who took the ancient teachings understood this and worked with it in various forms of Chinese, Japanese, and Oriental arts. Many of the Africans, I guess also with the Zulu and with the again, the Hausa people, and against, of course, the famous Yoruba people. The Yoruba also knew and taught of this science. What that particular thing is, is reflected very much in what is called the Great Pyramid. The Pyramid at Giza on the plateau there, in which we falsely call the Sahara Desert. That was not the desert it was built on. In other lectures I explained why that does make a big difference. It was a very interesting piece of land that now has been surrounded by the Sahara, and now they consider it having been the Sahara. It was not. It was a very key piece of land there, which some of these ancient people, 
these Lord gods, if you would, chose to build a huge city. And on top, one of the highest parts of the city was what we now call the Great Pyramid of Giza, who again, Western man teaches you as Cheops, but we know was actually supposed to be whose temple? Khufu, all right? If you will take a look at what is called the King's Chamber in the Great Pyramid, and those four slabs of stone that rise above the King's Chamber, I don't have a blackboard, but in a parapet like four actually slabs, and then above it is a whole little uh, room like built. They state that this is where the body of the king was to be placed upon his death, and that's why they built the pyramids. I state to you concretely, the pyramids were never built as an entombment for anybody. It definitely wasn't built for Khufu, and certainly was not built for Cheops. Had nothing to do with any of that. But as a people degenerate and ignorant do not understand what they see, they make up fallacies, and since the books are read as textbooks by us, we fall victim to the same lies and misinterpretation through ignorance. That pyramid structure was to resemble the skull of the sons of God, and to teach them that once they could understand this, they could then rise to the idea of the other edifice that they put out in front of it, which runs 240 feet, weighs something like 600 million tons, and is carved out of a solid pleat of granite called the Sphinx. Mark my words, you're going to hear more and more talk about the Sphinx this year and through 96 than you ever had. And by 95 and 96, it's going to start giving off vibrations just as man's skull that is the son of God will start giving off vibrations. When it gives off vibrations, the skull of man, the real man, the sons of God, will also start giving off vibrations. And when that tunnel to the grand gallery also opens as the stone falls away, so will the tunnel leading to the pineal gland within the sons of God open, and the powers will begin to run through him once more. Everything here was a symbol for those who were dead to finally awaken. That's when the pyramid became the tomb. It was never built as a tomb, but when those rightful users of the tomb fell in ignorance into necromancy or death-like knells, lost in consciousness, and the planetary vibrations also shrunk, then all that was was an entombment. The soul of man was lost in the skull of an animal for he could not awaken and quicken to the vibrations that came from his bloodline and was no more than the dumb beast of earth who some people were told to subdue. Not all people were told to subdue. To make this even more simple, or to get even more complex, we have collectively on the earth what we call five races of man. There are not five races of man. We have collectively on earth seven continents by which this man may exist. There are not seven continents on earth. And we have collectively again the colors black, brown, yellow, white, and pink by which the races of man are colored. There were also green, blue, and red men on earth and we've forgotten about that. The only one we hear referred to as a red man now is so-called Native American, which we call misnomered the Indian. Our planet has come under a period of ignorance, dumbness, and lowered vibration, and that time is now to move. It is past. There is no reason for ignorance, dumbness, or lowered vibration if you want, and if you happen to be of the sons of the God, and you don't respond to it, you will soon be dead. Now, isn't that a big threat? I'm not making the threat. I'm interpreting new and future knowledge as a metaphysician is supposed to, you have to find out whether you can agree with it or not. There is no truth until you decide what truth is, and each person should find that truth out for his or herself. Human, by which if you look in the encyclopedias and dictionary, it says we're all human beings. That's a lie. We are not all human beings. Hugh man is animal man. Hugh was a god Hugh, which roared the lower plains again under the old teaching of the ancient Sudanese and Nubian people and later on the so-called Egyptian people.
was a mixed race. You're going to find out just how mixed in a minute. Human did not come from God or what we call the Creator, but from lords or which we now call the Lord God and animals. They were a creation by scientists who we now refer to as Lord Gods. And they made human by engrafting and changing the animal life at different times as they found it on this planet and from other planets and dropped them off here. God man, this is the key, the one that had the key to the Sphinx and the pyramid, were from the sons of gods or which we now refer to as the angels and they were a cross between mankind and the sons of gods or the angels understand this in fundamentalist teachings angels are those spirits who represent the most high and who fly around with wings and live where this in Herod or some of the lower heavens and do the biddings of God himself. That is a fundamentalist interpretation. I do not decry a religion. I do not argue religion. I say that is only one interpretation of an angel. The other is those who mastered the angles, those who could bend light rays, those who understood the four pillars of the sacred sign of the swastika, which was not called the swastika, but a whole different name. It mastered those who understood the four rays of consciousness necessary to exist on the fourth dimension, which Earth was supposed to have been into millions of years ago, but got held back by humans. Now, as humans who are going to begin to die out, and the sons of God must come to the fore, so the angels can return, that awakened person is the one that will now go through changes like you have not seen as he attempts to throw off the dross, the animal, and come into his own consciousness. Mankind came from the lords of different planets and was soulless and could not reproduce. I repeat the three. Human, animal man, made from animal species both on this planet and other planets. God man, the sons of God and also sometimes interpreting with mankind a made person again by Lord God's on other planets and mankind again by strictly the lords of other planets in this one obviously you can begin to see what I'm inferring this has nothing to do with the creator the prime causation the cosmic universal logo eye this has to do with people who evolve up the ladder and because of their knowledge of genetics, their knowledge of geography, their knowledge of astronomy, I'm sorry, astrology, their knowledge of astrophysics, when they come to a planet, you treat them like gods. All of the series that you see now, Babylon 5, Deep Space 9, and all the rest of it, are trying to show you what really may exist in this system and in other systems to let you come into what is now called the planetary brotherhood. To awaken from the idea that you are a lone important species, you are not. But now the earth is becoming an important place as we will find out for numbers of reasons over this weekend. As we get deeper even tomorrow than we're going to go tonight. This is to awaken those who are not soulless but have deep spiritual souls. One of the things that black people have found consistently is that in the face of adversity, they sing. In the face of adversity, they can laugh. In the face of adversity, they come together as a unit. And one thing seems to bother them. They know that they're supposed to worship something. They know that they're supposed to be spiritual entities, but they're not finding the results sometimes strong enough. They have found that in following religions, fervently enough, really getting on fire with it, miracles do happen. But down deep, they're not satisfied because they still feel there ought to be a shortcut, and they know that something's there, but it's just not quite right, and daggone it, it frustrates me no end. How many have actually felt like that? Don't lie, if you haven't, you haven't. Most of you do. That's why the church is now, the people are going to the strongest word, the best choir, 
and the best place where they can also make money and meet good mates. And they're falling away from little churches that just can't make it anymore. Fundamentalism is separating from the advanced spiritual person. Again, I say this, and don't say I came here and talked about the churches and put them down. I'm not. Let each person go to any church they choose. It is their choosing. They will be responsible for their own souls if they have one. I'm saying that there's a difference between a spiritual person and a religious person. A spiritual person does not need a church for the home and temple of God that they find their souls in is the church and how they keep it clean and how they keep it out of ignorance and what they do with it shows their manifestation of the God life. For the other, they need a religious fervor and constantly reminded because they do not have quite the soul that is risen to the point where they can again manifest the creator within them. So they constantly have to remind themselves as the herd come together to give themselves the strength to carry on. That is changing. That's why you're going to find the church being attacked like never before and leaders in false churches falling like never before and that's why the fall wells and all the rest of it and you find them like little animals attacking each other, each one pulling each other down and the congregation suffering from it. Because man must learn he does not have to go to a church, he is the church. The temple of the living God is not just a folklore or a little thing that is said. The skull that you have when properly understood is a temple. It is so full of potential power and glandular interest there that the best way that the ancients could show it was to build a pyramid and say that that is the skull of man and then show him the difference between the Sphinx and the others that walk the life. Why is it you think that when Napoleon and the grenadiers came out onto the Giza Plateau and they saw the Sphinx looking Negroid in all of its glory. They went crazy and blew the nose off by sending 19 shot rounds into the nose and then coming back and climbing it and pickaxing at the nose and now they act like they don't know what the Sphinx looked, it used to look like. Why they don't, I don't know. They drew pictures of it and they saw what it looked like. It was a Negroid looking person looking outward, eastward. And it showed again that in front of this big pyramid, they put this skull and this animal. Three of the secrets of this pyramid, and there are eight, I'm sorry, there's seven secrets of the pyramid. Three of them is that the head of the man on the Sphinx and the body of the animal simply shows that if you notice there's wings on the Sphinx, there's scales on the Sphinx, there was a tail on the Sphinx, there were claws and hooves. It shows that everything that moved crawled or flew on earth was subjugated, subjugated or, domin or was dominated by the chief creature of earth, the son of God, the man's head. But everything on that man's body of the Sphinx needs those other things to survive until which time its consciousness rises enough and can outgrow them. It can eat fish, it can eat anything that moves and crawls, snails and everything else. It can breathe in air and live very well on that air if you would. I appreciate that very much. And live on that air if you would. It can do more things by adapting under different vibrations. It can consume everything on earth and live on it. Even to the herbs and the berries if it goes up that far. Once this is understood, then you understand again that it was that the animal portion of man was located in what is called the primal urge, the lower chakra, the animal brain, which is located just below the navel and connected to one of the units of the spine. Now what am I talking about the animal brain? You've only got one brain, it's got its different lobes, it's two hemispheres, and we all have studied it. That's not the only brain you have at all. What they say is wherever you have neurons, you have the capability of thinking and relaying energy. Neuron centers in the brain are connected to what they call glia cells. Glia cells are connected to what they call axons. Axons are connected to dendrite and dendrite stems are like conjunction boxes or what they want to call the uh, junction boxes for electricity. They run from one neuron center to the other. All that simply means is you have a place like a computer that can think and process thoughts. 
Then it has a coaxial cable that gives it the energy. Depending on what kind of energy comes through there, the computer generates more energy. The neuron center can generate more thought. Then, based on how many programs you have in that neuron center, how many programs you have for that computer, the computer can be smarter or dumber. And then once it kicks in, it's joined, just like with the cable, to other computers or other neuron centers. So the whole key is this. The neuron, wherever it is found, is capable of generating or processing thought. That's all you have to know. And if you doubt me, go look up in your physiology books to tonight, come out tomorrow, and we'll talk about it. If you understand and agree with me, let us move on. Anywhere you have a neuron that is linked to other neurons or to the spine or to nerve centers, that means that neuron can function. What is a neuron supposed to do? Generate and process thoughts coming and going. You have a collection of neurons up and down your spine and in certain pockets throughout the body, one of which is what is called the solar plexus. And just a little bit below it, above the spleen and above the navel, you will have a neuron center. That, I claim, is your animal brain location. That is why in the Oriental philosophy, in the Yoruba philosophy, even amongst the ancient Zulus, concentration upon the solar plexus with energies coming in either from the moon or the sun will turn a person more like into an animal than before. You can act like an animal and still be human because you are an animal person. Most of your ideas of survival, hunger, fear, fighting come generated from that selection of neurons at the solar plexus. They do not come from that up here in the skull. In fact, you will find when you get really uptight, what does it say? My stomach got in knots, I couldn't talk, I just felt pain here and I was all uptight. That is your animal brain talking, taking over to fight or flight, to fear or love, to hate or to detest. These are all animal passions and that's why they call them. These are the emotional hubs. They say that we use less than 1% of our brain. I sometimes even question that amount. The reason why we don't is because we are usually ruled by the animal body and animal brain, which has got so used to dominating man that now man is more animal in many cases than, what can I say, some of the animals. Some of the animals will not kill in the way man will now kill, or human will kill. Animals in general will fight to a point where one gives up, turns belly up, and the animal growls, postures, and walks away. Man will blow you away, human will blow you away now for no reason at all. We have become more animals, and therefore those sections of our neuron centers work better than the one up here. So much here, this thing up here has nothing to do with getting rusty. It gets a lot of mucus around it. Its ends burn out and it won't fire correctly. You begin to really try to use it, you get a headache. You use it even more, you begin to get boils and breakouts because the energy has to drive out the pus and stuff that is coagulating the machinery. We don't use it. And there has been a lot of interest to stop us from using it, especially those of the sons of God and their offspring. Why? Because mankind and human was taught by mankind that if ever the sons of God would awaken to the power of using the upper brain power, they would become so devastating, so frighteningly auspicious that everything on earth would tremble at the power of this latent God and giant now asleep. That's why they've never told you the proper use of the brain, and they will tell you again also that the pineal gland is an atrophied, non-usable tissue, an organ that used to function but now has no bearing. That's another one of the biggest lies ever told. The pineal gland generates melanin and melatonin. It works best between the hours of 11 at night and 2 in the morning, when most of you should be asleep or in total darkness. It does not like light during the time it is regenerating. And that is also when most of the sons of God will find that three days out of the month, 
or either in the evening or daytime, you have to find out whether you are a solar being or a moon frequency being. I know you don't know what I mean yet. Keep coming and we'll talk. That means at that time, the hole at the roof of your mouth will begin to let out air. It will begin to generate a little bubbling sound. Some of us have not even understood when this happens. It usually has a pattern, and as you become more and more conscious of it and do things to increase it, it will open up more and more. How many of you, now don't lie about it, share with me, I'd like to see again the consciousness here. Men, because they say, women, you don't have this privilege or this curse, whichever. Your day is tomorrow. Men have found that sometimes they seem to feel air or bubbling at the roof of their mouth in the area I just had you to try and trace with your tongue. How many have noticed that sometimes active, but you never knew when it was? Just two, three, four, some of you are thinking about it. And you all say, boy, what was that? And it sounded like a little bubbling sound. Sometimes it might even go on for 30 seconds, which is very frightening. You say, what the heck was that? That is our king's chamber and the grand gallery leading to that Right about that, leading to that passageway, trying to again work, trying to energize itself. Something you did kicked it in a little bit. I state through meditation, I state through honoring the pineal gland by sleeping during those hours. You don't even have to sleep much past that if you can get good sleep during that time. It will increase the degree and vibration of the melatonin that you have in your body, increase your psychic power, so called your sense of ESP and your health will increase. Once more, as when the sons of God came here and committed the atrocity that lowered the potential of man, and yet it was a blessing because it gave a seed and a spark to mankind that he could never have had otherwise. So it was both a curse and a benefit. When they came here, our planet was surrounded by an electric, I'm sorry, a magnetic field. That magnetic field cloaked out gamma rays and other what they call cosmic rays from coming into our planet and disrupting the life progression that was on the surface of our planet. These same Lord Gods then came and set up an electrical field inside that magnetic field causing everything to slow down. Now they refer to it as Earth's electromagnetic field or simply the Van Allen radiation belt. It is full of negative radiation just like an atomic bomb or Chernobyl was full of negative radiation which is harmful to grazing consciousness, to getting in the higher vibrations once more into our Earth. It was put up there as a frequency barrier by purpose by Lord God, who for a time sought to dominate this planet and tried to misuse again the seed of the angels who had committed adultery here, but also had given a soul a chance to migrate and progress here in a form that normally was not used. Let me simply break it down by saying this. For close to five million years, the sons of God have degenerated on this planet. Their souls have come and gone in bodies, never opening up to what and who they really were, only from time to time getting a little light into what they potentially were supposed to be. Once they were not able to call on directly the universal cosmic creator, they had to then accept false gods and false teachings by mankind who was put upon the earth later on by others to keep this Son of God in control. From greatness and grandeur, having the bloodline of the angels, they also had the higher frequency body potential of the angels. But now it was locked in an animal body and could only escape between the hours of 11 and the 2 in the morning when the pineal gland could kick in and they could come out of these false bodies and become what they really were. That's why people who dream in black and white are on the verge of ascending. People who dream in color and remember the dreams and have dreams that come in threes are prophets. And as it moves up again, they can begin to awaken and come outside of your body, look down upon your body and see that you are more than the body because you never were human. You were simply encased in human and locked in by the frequency barrier and you didn't know who you were. Trapped on a planet who you didn't even come from, were only here for a lesson, 
the lesson has got to go on and on and on infinitum or even the planet is getting tired of that now and is changing the frequency what we are about the business now is awakening as you watch the stars you will see and if some of you are very much into celestial mechanics into astrology or astronomy you will find that the constellations are not in the proximity that they were even back in 1975 they have been displaced you will find that due to what is called the progression of the equinoxes even the signs by which you think you were born under no longer are the signs that rule you they are not your natal ruling signs because they have now changed 30 degrees time and frequencies are speeding up some of you should have noticed that the days are flying by the time seems to just slip by that's for you who are matching vibrations you become quick and sometimes agitated sometimes searching for what you don't even know you're searching for but you know something is changing while other soulless creatures say time is still the same it is not the same time is frequencing upward it's speeding up you must also speed up and to do so you must awaken those glands that can cause your body to keep up with your soul and it means you will be mutating don't become frightened of mutation sometimes if everybody mutates nobody notices the first mutation will be of the soul progression and your neuron centers will begin to clean up their act that's why head colds will be the rule that's why asthma will be the rule asthmatic conditions will be the rule as you try to clean off the mucus and burn it up the more you use your brain the faster it will be burned up and the more you get the headaches and the headaches will go away because you'll finally begin the frequency like you're supposed to for those who can't they will get sick of head diseases and die for those who can't and are in the body they'll get sick, sick uh, they'll get uh, attacked by body diseases and die this ease only means one thing imbalance out of order to hold a charge and not be able to use that charge will cause that charge to burn up the wires to burn up the connections this is why you're moved now to do things probably you hadn't wanted to do before certain health foods certain health drinks herbals you all wanted to go into the marijuana and stuff before because you know there was something that you could activate and so rather than do it the hard way you say i'm going to just trip out real quick not understanding that in a lowered frequency when you do that you run into lower vibrations which also are called to a planet with that and into all kind of trouble losing your mortal souls we've all talked about that but we didn't understand what we were saying but to a clear head who through the use of consciousness raising drugs now I'm not talking about now the street drugs, I'm not talking about barbiturals and influence and all this kind of thing. I'm talking about the whooshies and the foties and the ginsengs and the things that can tremendously raise your vibrational rate. The pineal gland then begins to activate and not die up and dry up, it activates. One of the reasons why prostate trouble is on the increase in most males is because the prostate gland which was simply part of the almost dried up womb of the ancient woman part of man must reflect from the pineal and the orchid gland to come into full bloom to produce the kind of seed that can bring forth the gods and this is why I'm going to call in the children lecture at the end of this one tonight we always think of children as only coming through a woman the seed of man activates the woman and therefore that seed must be strong to call forth the right kind of soul at this time as this prostate gland dries up because it cannot get reflected energy from the orchid gland how many even know because i don't say it unless you do because i might call it and ask you where it is where the orchid gland is if someone does please share it do you know where the orchid gland actually is how many have even heard of the orchid gland as being part of the male glandular system and they don't want you to know that is like a little sun right near the prostate it reflects energy from the pineal gland by way of the spinal cord and then flashes and as it flashes it increases the uh, seminal fluid energy which then can house a new type of a sperm cell which then when that sperm cell is released or when it is built up activates the higher glands of man but it must reflect the light from the pineal in most cases the pineal was already atrophied or on its way out for a soulless 
mankind, it profits now the knell of the death bell. For it means that if our planet can take in new energy, and if the electromagnetic field or frequency barrier, barrier can be altered so that higher frequencies can come in, and that pineal gland kicks in, then you will be once again in tune with your planet. And mankind having no soul, having only the ability to report to the Lord God Master, will go crazy and begin to dysfunction and do crazy things. Human, who is part of both, will begin to question and try to follow its higher source, and the whole thing will lead to tremendous wars or tremendous conflagrations. The war will last no time if the sons of God can awaken to who they are. Because once they get in tune with the planetary head, the planet will do whatever they as a unit ask for. That is what some of the Yoruba people understood, what the magicians understand, and in a small way try once more to get in frequency with the slower heavens just above where they live or on their continent or the elemental kingdom can obey. It was meant that the sons of God, being of the seed of angels, didn't have to even do that. They could summon, they could call forth, they could put aside. But before any of that could be done, they had to first come into the consciousness and frequency of who they were. Again, I kind of repeat what I said when I was here before. This summer, you will hear, and starting this summer, probably for the next three years, about the sunspot activity being on the increase. You begin to hear more again about solar activity, prominences, all types of energy from the sun that will be very harmful. You'll hear about ultraviolet light, burning tissue, and melanomas, and carcinomas affecting the blood and the skin of people on earth. For the sons of God who have an active pineal, that will be a day of blessing, for it will not affect you. You will not be burned, you will simply darken and the melanin growing, it's almost like a vicious cycle to make you more and more powerful. As they get cancers of the skin and glands, you will get glands beginning to awaken and throwing out the frequencies that are not good and reconnecting the DNA molecules that were separated. For at one time we had 12 strands of DNA, now we have two. How could we function as an advanced God or being when we don't even have the right hookup? We can't go to 220, we've got to stay at 110, 120. That will activate the glands to begin to work on the molecules of the cells and the cell's DNA will begin to unite. What they call junk DNA is not junk DNA, it is where it all got blasted apart and now, like an amoeba, it will be coming together again and each cell in your body, blueprint, will begin to vibrate faster as you become once what you were, the true sons of the God. For man, to be man at this time, Man must understand his feminine counterpart that is within him, his animal counterpart that is within him, the angel and God counterpart that is within him, and his own soul blueprint, which is him. That's why you will find people undergoing hypnosis, past life recall, flashbacks of things and intuitively that they didn't know happened, but they'll begin to see their past lives come forth people that they meet that they'll be drawn to and they don't know why, places that they'll go and they'll go to and they don't know why, but each time you'll find that there's a benefit that comes when you follow that mind because it will be something of an experience that will help to reawaken you. You must remember who you were. You must work with the DNAs in order for the DNAs to begin to entwine together. We speak of the tetratomation, which of course Jewish people cannot affirm, they will not say the name Yahweh. They will not say yad heh hey They will not say any of those things because they were not the chosen for this energy. They were usurpers and interpreters of the books of magic 
without the soul to contend with them. But the soulless ones and the soul ones were both asleep. Now when we understand this pineal gland flashes more and more, as the pyramid begins to also begin to curve off sound and the sphinx begins to vibrate, that it is only a sign that the sons of God are calling forth their fathers and the angels are now being summoned to return. When they come back, the sky will be full of spaceships. Some are already there and seen by those who can see in that frequency, others never see them. When that happens, all granite formations in, on, and around our earth will begin to give off sounds and vibrations. It will be a sign. With that will increase mighty earthquake and volcanic activity. It has to be that way. And if you happen to live on a fault line, you best move. If you hold back further the retardation of this planet, you are not serving the planet and the planet cannot serve you. You will always be told once you are psychic when to move on and what to avoid. And the more you come in tune with the lines of force coming into our planet, the more will be your radio that is built in that will operate and you will just know what to do or what to avoid. You'll know who to trust and who to accept. You'll know when you're powerful and when you're weak and you'll know what to do to increase either one. The thing is, will you follow that inner voice and that inner sign? To conclude the part of the man lecture, Man is separate from mankind who is an invention by the Lord God. The Lord God is a planetary ruler as each planet has rulers and this one went a little bit berserk because of things that happened which we'd have to talk about which is under the science called cosmology. It has nothing to do with the first cause cause God a creator. Please do not say that I said that. We're talking about advanced beings who from time to time see the planet and from time to time even interfere with the planet and now they must move on. The creation that was here that went through all of this will be double rewarded because the souls that choose to incarnate at this time which we call children and have incarnated for the last 40 years the advanced triggers now will be rewarded for what they came here and suffered greatly through to get the job done and to show again that the angels could return. Children are our key. That's why the state wants to run your children, disrupt your home, and do everything it can to stop that soul from awakening and being the mighty army that they were sent here to be. This is where we must talk to women and mothers. We must talk to the man, however, because in many cases it is the boy child that is the one that will carry forth the great ruler out of which his continents will come, that the angels will walk through and work through, and whose chamber will awaken just as the Sphinx and Pyramid is awakening. Let me just say this as I conclude the first part. They not only have found the same Sphinx on Mars, as Zulu also told you, but on the moon, on Jupiter, and everywhere they go, the same Sphinx stares them back. The sons of God did not just come to the earth. They are the masters of our solar system and our constellation. Just as in Star Wars there was wars between the good and bad, there was a war here on earth. They hid that book from the Bible, the wars of the lords. They hid all of the things that would let you begin to understand that you were different from the other races of earth and earth was your home not theirs but now that you can come into consciousness you won't have to worry about getting out in the street with AKAs we out in the street and shooting them up you can carry more power that will stop any bullets from being fired you can cause earthquakes to happen or not you can cause fire to actually come from the sky and I'm not trying to compliment you because misuse will burn you up too. It's just a simple way of understanding as you're beginning to come into your own, certain conditions are necessary. First, if you cannot separate, then you must separate in the mind and spirit. So you do not vibrate with those who will be destroyed by this change. And next, if you don't believe in spaceships, that's good. 
But if you do believe in a new Jerusalem and in chariots of fire, it's the same thing. The angels of the Bible are the space people. That's all that they were, advanced scientists, and some of them act pretty dumb, in fact. They also have weaknesses and strengths. But the good guys from Sirius are on their way back. Because of that, you have the annual enemy, the people from Orion and Lyra, still giving you the new metaphysical cosmic books, which still lie to you. But Earth will be a testing ground like you have not seen, and you will be alive to see it. So before you go crazy, understand you're going to see things in the sky, things on the earth and in the sea that will make everybody tremble. But understand, they will still serve you if you but know who you are. I say to this, sons of God, awaken. Daughters of God, know who you are. Do not bring in seeds that are full of drugs and lower souls that are seeking to get in at this time and clear your own family's minds. You might be surprised that you have already entertained an angel unawares. I thank you. Again, there is no truth to you decide what truth is. And again, you must understand that as you raise in consciousness, you may begin to learn better than I am teaching. As you raise in consciousness, you may even make contact with the angels if there is such a thing. But I'm simply saying the point is to try and do something and do now. Do not sit and mark time no matter what your friends are doing. This is the time of changes. This is the time of rebalancing. And how many wake up and how many really come into full consciousness will determine what's going to happen here in the United States. If it keeps up without the spiritual people awakening, the United States is going to be devastated. There would be no justice if it was not. But again, how and where will depend a lot on how the sons of God awaken. We'll talk about the daughters of the Most High tomorrow. We have in our midst now on the streets of every major city in the world, in the schools of every major city in the world, in the hospitals of every major city in the world, in the legislatures of every major city in the world, and in the graves and tomb sites of every major city in the world are children. Children are a very interesting phenomenon. Now, I normally, and I think I will do this though, so the Hobbshed Soup will have the entire lecture on thing. I will go through the general format, but then I'm very anxious to get into the heavier portion of what this means to us as a people and as a society now. I looked up the word child, and it simply said a baby infant, boy or girl, son or daughter, descendant, person like a child, person again whose interests are childlike and immature or childish presence. I looked at the word childish. It says like a child, not suitable for a grown person, foolish, immature, infantile, baby-ish. I looked at the word childlike. Like a child, innocent, frank, simple. And I looked up the word children. More than one child, many boys or girls. Children, by definition, have all of the things that you can think about that has ever been written about them on record. Their volumes of children and how to raise children and how to raise boys and girls to become children and how to let infants being born as to be strong children. But certain things about a child's physique and certain things about a child also are interesting to note too. Enough and hard enough to try and protect that delicate apparatus that separates us from other life forms. Also, in that head are little openings which we call sinuses. In many cases, due to the ignorance of the parents and the non-opening and non-development of the child itself, those openings have been clogged up. That is what is called sinusitis and sinus problems. Those openings are to be kept 
open, not clogged up. If you clog them up, you will lessen the vibrations of the soul that is in the body. With a child, again, also there are meridians or lines that run from the spine to the ear, to the hands, the palm of the hands, to the soles of the feet, and the top of the head. These little energy lines are like little wires. They're to be kept clear, unclogged, unfettered, so that the child can again develop quickly. For in nature's way, the child should be fully grown at 12 to 13 years old when puberty, and in the case of the female, when the menses set in, and the case of the male, when it kicks into the higher powers. Because of this backward, retarding society, they don't want that to happen, and it has succeeded in stopping puberty and the development of the brain. The body now is outstripping the brain in growth. That is a dangerous sign. For the body now is becoming that of the giants, especially with the sons of God. They will grow very tall, and the daughters of God will grow very tall, but unless the brain capacity and the neuron energies keep pace, you will have a giant dumb beast capable of doing terrible things without the control of the brain. Also, some children, as you learn, do not follow Dr. Spock's pattern, do not follow the prescribed pediatric procedures and do things different. Some of the children can learn to walk in 10 months, some 18 and 19 months old before they walk and they're crawling around sometimes at 26 months old. Some can say four to five words in the first year. Some can say four to five words in the fourth month. It changes. Some children stay extremely hungry during the first six months and take in with an appetite that is voracious. Others seemingly don't want to eat at all. Some children are born to drug and dope addicts and seem to be afflicted with drug habits at birth and continue on through showing all the signs of that, while others again seem to show pronounced genetic activity that makes them extremely psychic, and the mothers know, but the fathers also know, because the mother has been communicating on a psychic plane. The father, however, has also been communicating on a psychic plane but sometimes because of this backward society is not told the little signs that lets them know, especially if the soul is a male soul. Also, we will find that not only are the children going to be taller now, and you're going to see heights that begin to shock you, but they also have psychic powers that they're using, but they sometimes don't even realize they're using it. We're going to explain all of that. You will find when some children are around you, if you're a male, when the male child is around you, if you're a female, when the female child is around you, you'll experience a strange buzzing in your right ear. And sometimes after they leave, you'll think a bee is around, and you know a bee can't be around in the dead of winter. They are there to unlock certain powers within you, and when they're beginning to unlock, it's like a set that comes on, but the picture or the sound is not clear. So you get a little buzzing and you whip at it. You see people doing this a lot. You watch, especially black people, and there'll be nothing around and people will say they're crazy. They are not crazy. They are finally awakening. That energy that spirals in when the piney was working will sometimes let you see flashes before your eyes. You see things flash and you're not quite sure whether it's a TV set, are you going crazy, or is something happening to you? You are awakening. When you hear it on your left ear, clear it up. There's problems. You should hear it on your right ear first, and then it should entrain and go around your head. When you do that, you will find that you can begin to remember things that you thought you forgot. Sounds will begin to come in your ear, and I'm saying S-O-N-G-S, that you might not have heard since the 40s, 50s, or 60s, depending on how old you are. That's why certain stations now are carrying the oldies but goodies. They are to awaken you and help your soul to tune into the best of what it is. The powers are fighting for you. You must then designate what you want to hear and tune out. Don't argue with the station. Tune out what you don't want to hear. Tune to what you do want to hear. You control your own sets so far. These children are not children at all. They were not put here for you to sacrifice 
and this child didn't ask to come here, so I will sacrifice my life for the child. Don't be a fool. The child was here because it is here to teach you, and you're here to teach it. You can both learn. You're not here to sacrifice. Your life is too precious. Both of you are supposed to understand it may be your worst enemy that is now born amongst you, and it may be your best friend. It may have been your husband or wife. It is not at all a new soul because any soul coming in since 1985, really I would say 1980, is an old soul. They are here to fight, but in a way that you don't even understand. They are here to reawaken you, to help get guidance, and they all must be centered. You cannot leave those souls alone. They did not come here to be left alone. If you leave them alone, they will come into the maturity of the animal body and they will fight and kill. They have done it before, they will do it again. If you guide them, they will not be abused by computers, they master computers. In fact, it kicks in their neuron centers faster. The sounds that you hear on the air in rap, the rap is only the soul that is very angry and it needs to be angry because it needs that strength of again, the, uh, what do you call it, the gland of fight and flight. Can't think of the gland right now I'm talking about. It needs that kind of a quickening and awakening. But it also needs a time for peace and quiet. And you will find once they go through that, they suddenly fall asleep and they sleep very deeply because that is also to bring balance. Children now are again your best friends, your worst enemies, or people in between, but they've known you before and you've known them before. When you conceived, both male and female, it was not an act of one, the way that you vibrated at the time of conception will bring forth the kind of soul that you called for at that time. If you were under drugs, the child will come through as a soul that could take that kind of vibration. If you were in love, the child will come through reflecting that manifestation because that was what called it forth and made it tune in. If you were raped or you hated, it will reflect that. But whatever you had in your seed and in your womb and in your ovum and in the sperm cell, that is what soul was called forth at that time. But mark my word, none of these children are weak. These children are strong beyond belief and they can take things that you could not take. That's why they chose this time of birth. They can be very good, they can be very bad, but they are not weak. They are strong. They were here for the final countdown. How you feed that child, both in the womb and after it sits at your table, will also help to either mellow that soul and help it to turn its frequency upward, or devastate that soul and help it to turn its frequency downward. The battle for melanin-carrying children is on on this planet. That's why you had the latter child murders. That's why you had the penis tips of the boys cut off, as I talk about in the melanin wars, to extract the best form of orchic secretion and melanin to help in, uh, enhance for the soulless ones again their ability to fight off diseases and imbalances brought on by the frequency change of our planet. You must protect them. What are the rewards of sharing your life with a child? The child may help you to live longer or increase the quality of your life by giving you that blend that you need. You'll be able to tell because a nurturing child will, even when you chastise it, quickly try to get past that, get on your good side, and get on with the real things at hand. Whippings and spankings may help deter that child, but they will take those slaps as though you didn't give them. They are strong. But if you can combine that with the thought of love while you give it, they know right from wrong, and you will help that quality side of the soul to manifest before the other side is brought out. All children born with melanin are precocious. They learn faster, react quicker, and can hold thoughts and memory longer than any child without melanin and to the degree of that active melatonin is to the degree of the potential of that child. That's why the system wants to stomp out and hold back heavy melanin-laden children. 
They want to take away the right of teaching from the family so that the state can take those children, turn them into either a drone army to be tapped glandularly or to a fighting army to attack the very forces that can stop them, or again for control. They know and fear the melanin carrying child now being born. They have not only tabulated the amount of melanin, the frequency of the melatonin and vibration, where it secretes in the body, they have statistics on this, and I state to you, believe it or not, be very careful of your child when you turn it loose in a system that wants to hold back the coming God-man. Children are not a curse or a blessing. They are a reality that you have brought forth based on the vibrations of conception and the teachings in your home. Children, when not guided, when given permission to do any darn thing that they want to, will usually come out with the wrong side because even though you don't guide them, the school, the radio, the TV, the books, and vibrations of broadcasting under brain control and mind control that are constantly coming across the radio and in these records will take over and do what you are not doing. They will look to you first, but they will look understand that most of the tapes that are being made now have subliminal suggestions already incultated on the triple and quadruple tracking so that when they buy a record a compact disc and that's why they want the disc back again they are hearing one thing with the conscious mind and another thing with the subconscious mind they are being controlled total recall is not an arnold schwarzenegger movie it is a reality in america today the Beatles, when they were using it to begin to get control of English-speaking Caucasian children, started that out with their track, and they had underlying in there a subliminal suggestion, and on the cover of the first Beatles manual, what do they call it, album, they had forth there a thing to go and call a long-distance international number. And they counted to see how many people would call from the United States this number to find out how many potential psychics there were here. They had something like 85 calls the first year of the album, 800 calls the second year of the album. But that was nothing. It meant that over here, we were pretty much asleep. In many cases, and I'm not saying this about all of the people that record, very few of the rap artists own the A&R or the company that produces their record. All they do is go there and give off the talent as they see it. The A&R man or person, woman, then can subliminally track anything they want underlying the rap record and the message may be good, but the results will be what the A&R man did because the subconscious mind works on the faster subtleties and never goes for the obvious. Be very careful to what your child listens to, especially during the formative years. Tomorrow I'll tell you about what you can do while the child is in the womb. To the men, I simply say this. It is not how much time, and although the mother would tell you to spend more time, it is not how much time you spend with that soul or child. It is the quality of that time that you spend with the soul and child. That child is psychic. When that child sleeps, you can do more to it than you can when it's awake because it has no defense in its sleep. If you're a good parent, it will not even reject you being in the room. New teaching methodologies, which I wish I could share with you in classes, I keep saying that again, can teach you to record your child's own voice and play it back to them when they're asleep, and the soul never rejects its own voice. Sleep learning is faster than the other learning, and nowadays just to keep your child alive in class becomes a priority, not learning. So you must learn at home. You must learn in enclaves. If it is your church enclave, fine. If it is your block club, if it is a family of elders like it used to be, everybody learns by the quality of the time spent and souls nowadays realize that quality. They do not look for a lot of superfluous time. They look for quality time and if they don't get it from you, they will get it from someone else. The permissive generation under Caucasian society in the 60s and again when they begin to do the drugs and so was wanted by the state sanctioned by the state and by those people under the different tri symbols who want the new world order to come over 
To get a new world order, you must control the young and make the young responsive to whoever is going to run that order. That's why they have the new teaching methodology. The teaching books now teach the child to reject what the family says, to question what the family says, and to come to the teacher for its real rightful answers. And they're putting those books throughout the school system. Under the new House bill under our present president, it will seek to abolish again the, what do you call it again, the uh, little, I um, can't think right now, the groups that help now the principals, PTAs, no, it's a different one they call it now. I can't think of what they call it right now, excuse me. But anyway, this will abolish the control of anything and put the power back into the hands of the principals who are appointed by the school superintendents, okay? And it means, again, that it will take the power of you questioning the curriculum, of you questioning the teachers, back away. They will overrule it and take you to court, make a few examples, and everybody else will run and get away from it again. Children now are very psychic. If they are not doing drugs, they will spend time thinking, and then when they don't get the answers, they will fill it up with conversation. They will contact their peers and stay on the phone, but they will give you a time within that day when they will make an overture to you for your teaching, for your guidance. They also are very psychic in is that they can also feel what you think as well as hear what you say. Don't ever forget that. They also are still looking for guidance and love. You may think they are not. At one time they were, if you didn't give it, that's when you begin to lose them. Not false love, not buying of things, but quality love, teaching, helping to awaken them and giving them the real energy that they want. Children are not children. They may have been your parents in another lifetime. Some of you may question that. It is your right to do so. That is a teaching of reincarnation which once was taught very freely upon this earth. And I can give you references within the Holy Bible that refer to it again. Not in this lecture though. They may have been your enemy and because you have something to get straight, they are drawn to you to get it on and get it over with. They may have been your lover and came at this time to protect or help you. That's why you will find some bonding that you can't even understand there. I don't mean sexual molestation. I mean a bonding there that sometimes is frightening where they seem to almost know what you're thinking. That's why you are their parents. Men understand many of the boys that are now coming to you. Do not come to you for you to knock them around. Do not come for you to just talk about black history. Do not come for you to talk about white history. They want to just be in your vibes. And if you have something quality to say, they live on this. The pineal gland awakens on this. The higher conscious comes out on this. Just being in your presence with quality time. Not making do, but wanting the real vibration. That can be extended under times when other forces will have to use guns on them. They will remember that and should serve you or at least recognize who you are. It does mean one thing, you need to know who you are. In understanding the first part of tonight's lecture, the sons of God's time to awaken, understand the second time, or the second part of tonight's lecture, the children coming in are the warriors either mentally, spiritually, or physically. They are the ones that didn't need to incarnate for a very long time. They are the ones that were so strong in their manifestation of good or bad that it took this time for them to come back in. They were not coming here to be protected. They're coming here to learn and have the ability to express through someone that they feel can help them. They also can learn in their sleep. Please keep remembering this. Faster sometimes than they can learn in their awakening state. They also are very psychic. They also know things very much and again, the state is going to fight you for them. Make no bones about it. They will. The children in 1994 will be the adults in the year 2000. Even if they're just born now, they will mature very 
very fast, both physically and mentally, with the new vibrations. Why? Because they have not had a lot of time to clog up. They have not had a lot of time to get all of the shots that have held us back, all of the misteachings that we've had to unlearn. They're here seeking truth, and if they hear a lie, they know a lie just like that. Three lies and you've lost them. It'll take you a year to regain what you told them in three lies. You cannot lie to these children. But if you start telling them the truth and don't treat them like children, treat them with love and treat them as advanced adults, they will mature like they're supposed to very fast. When the physical body grows fast, the mental body is supposed to grow five times as fast. Look at those developing young and now understand what you've messed up if you haven't tried to reach the mind which is five times faster than the body. Did you just hear what I said? Look at those advanced, developed, at 12 and 13 looking like you didn't look until you were 20 and 25, and understand that the brain is five times ahead of that and see the opportunity you may be missing. Don't treat them like children. Treat them like adults. Don't give them false love. Give them the respect you want them to give you through the love. If you cannot find love for them, then at this time begin to show at least a concern and a hope for them to begin to understand who they are. They are souls, some from distant planets, who've had to come back at this time to finish out what we call karmic cycles. There are souls that have been to say your friend and enemy past, but they are all strong. They can take what you can, never underrate them, and never forget that they are psychic, and they tune in to that subtle part of you even when you are not aware of it. You can't fake them, you've got to come out and give it to them like it is. That's why they chose this time, and that's why nature chose this time, and that's why the Almighty Creator chose this time for them to return. Let me say one other thing, and then I'll conclude with the children lecture. Astrology was not meant to be a guidepost for every action you take with your newborn or with yourself. It was to be only a guide, not an instruction manual, but a guide, showing you the different programs that your TV sets could bring on, and then you tune into what program you want. The stars do not impel you to do anything. I'm sorry, they do not compel you to do anything. They impel you in a direction that you already want to go and that's why you choose to follow that particular star sign. Why am I saying this? By understanding when your child came in you will get a general tendency as to its strengths and weaknesses. Advanced souls make astrology. They do not follow astrology. They can be as different from their sign ascending, NATO or otherwise as night and day. And understand also that because of the progression of the equinoxes, our signs are off 30 degrees anyway. I keep saying this because so many of us are choosing astrology now to escape to, saying again, that child was born like this because it's under that sign, and that's my Gemini, and that's my... No, sir. These souls make or break astrology. They make or break stars. They are free souls in a free will zone, and they're here to express. The only thing you've got to do is to understand that they came from your vibrations. And somewhere along the line, those vibrations were enough to attract that soul, try to recapture what it was that first called them forth before it is too late. For those of you whose children have already seemingly crossed over the border, meaning by that not died, but died in soul and spirit and you can't do anything with them, understand if they sleep in your house, you can do everything with them if you only have wisdom. The very rap records that they think they hear can be utilized to put in a subtle meaning which the brain will not reject because the subconscious mind cannot fight when the soul is out of the body. It will do anything that's on that particular tape which I can show you how to make. Understand that your very presence in a room while that child sleeps will carry the vibrations over to the etheric body and help to soothe it even if it's on drugs. There are certain essences, that's what incense and perfumes used to be about, now we don't even understand that anymore. 
that can calm a soul down and make the brain awaken so you can teach it better. There is no such thing as hopelessness for a person who has hope. There is only hopelessness for fools and ignorance who will follow the devastation of a soulless planet and a soulless caretaker of a planet that is now trying to awaken. You have power. You just don't know it and don't expect your enemy to teach you. You've got to go within and follow the right teachers or go within and follow the dictates of the Almighty and you'd be surprised what you can learn when you are drug free and at calm and home in your own peaceful place. If your home is not peaceful, do the things to make it peaceful. Say the things that the other mate wants to hear if necessary and placate that house or separate and let each soul go free so each one can express themselves and not be held back. There is a real enemy outside the home. Don't bring one in the home. And understand again, that child may be the moderator between you and your spouse. That child, if raised correctly, may be the balancer between you and your spouse. The home can be as happy as you want it, even with unemployment and in spite of the new world order. But you have to learn the real power of psychic and subliminal and out of the body and spiritual things, not religious things, spiritual things that have all the power in the universe that will bring you all of those things you think you can't get just by the very vibrations within it. Your child may be your blessing or your curse, not because of what the state does, but because of what you do or don't do. Once again, I thank you. Okay, for a brief time, or if it's possible, for Q and A's, is there, and please understand this, I do not bring with me, or our group does not distribute products that are bad knowingly. We have one man who does our research, and that's all we pay him to do, is to research new products. Thank you. It's not what you call it. Yeah, I see, okay. To research, thank you very much. To research new products, and as, oh, okay, as these things may change, because you see, some of the good chemists, the good researchers, are being, are leaving corporations. They see bad things happen as government and conglomerate takeovers come, and they won't work for them. So when we see a product line changing, we change the product, that's all. We try to keep our prices down, and yet make some profit, understand the profit is reflected in the profit. The BioGuard Plus is an antioxidant enzyme. You take this in the morning on an empty stomach or at night at least two hours after you take food. You do not take this product when something is in your stomach being digested. You try to take it on an empty stomach. Other than that, it will simply help to break up the food. If you take it with no food or little food in the stomach, it will become a scavenger of free radicals. All I can tell you about that is, those are the things that happen as you go about your daily life. Those are the things that make you age and show your age. Those are the things that bring on diseases. Those are the things that stop your cells from vibrating at their fullest. These things search out those free radicals, either engulf them or set them up so that certain things in the blood can take them away. This is all that this is. It is an antioxidant enzyme, a free radical scavenger taken on an empty stomach in the morning or at night. <laughs> Genesis 1000, and some of you know about aerobic 7, we used to handle aerobic 7, we found that the government took over aerobic 7, and we find that although they use dismutase, uh, amylase, is three things that they use, the only thing now that's good is the SOD, the superoxide dismutase. Everything else, it cannot live up to what it says. So far, as far as we know, this product does. It uses all three. And consequently, this is something you should carry around with you, I feel, at all times. It kills off anaerobic bacteria wherever they are and whatever liquid you put them into. Anaerobic bacteria are the things that harm you. 